Welcome to my talk about uh, Open API. So this is probably the most important picture. When a client communicates with a server over some REST API, then the Open API specification is the contract that they share. It is a file that contains all available method, all, all the endpoints that you can contact uh, in the server. Maybe you have heard um, something about Swagger and you are wondering what is the difference. Um, basically, it is the same. This is something we know well at the Eclipse Foundation when a project is given to a foundation and this was also the case for OpenAPI, then it gets renamed. So basically, and Swagger specification is the same as an open API specification. And Swagger, the brand, continue to exist, but now it's more used for tooling that the company uh, Smart Beer continues to provide. And uh, open API is more the open source project um, where the specification continues to live and to evolve. My name is uh, Jeremy. I'm a Java developer. You can follow me on Twitter, on uh, GitHub. I try to contribute uh, to open source project as much as I can. And I work at Unblue. We are in uh, Switzerland and we are doing tools for banks that allow them to have better conversations with their customer. So basically, if on the e-banking side, uh, you contact your banking advisor uh, through a chat, and you can share the content of your web page with him without having to install anything, there is a good chance that you are using our solution. But back to the topic, Open API. I started to really use them uh, early this year as part of my job at Unblue, and then I realized they are everywhere. So just to uh, give you some examples, I was reading the Eclipse Planet, and this is uh, the Eclipse Cura project. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but uh, in the middle of the article, uh, I have seen how they provide some way of uh, describing the endpoints with uh, an open API specification. Same for Jira. Uh, I guess everybody knows Jira. Uh, a colleague of mine last week, he just, uh, wanted to contact, to, to perform some changes over the REST API they provide, and he noticed that they provide the open API specification for their server. And OpenShift, the same story, we are using it to deploy our solution, and uh, you have a lot of clicks to perform in the console in order to deploy something. If you want to like do that per REST API, of course, you can use the open API specification that is developed uh, on GitHub. So now the question, what is in this file? Basically, it's, re it's really basic. So you have, uh, it's a JSON or a, a YAML file that contains several sections. The most important one is the, the, the one in the middle containing all the paths that are available. Another interesting section is the components section where you can put uh, entities that are shared between uh, multiple paths of your, um, of your specification. For example, a schema. And uh, you have like a, a section where you describe the security, what are the, how you can contact your server, you can tag the, the path and so on. But the most important part is really the path one. And it looks like this, but uh, I will kind of show that right now because if we have a specification, we want to edit it and to, to see what, what's in there. So let's switch to like a real demo. Um, like this is the Swagger editor. I have prepared like for this, to, for this uh, talk, I have prepared a small example. It's a kind of a backend to manage uh, to-do tasks. And um, here I am in the Swagger editor. It's an online editor. I hope you can see. Maybe I, I'm, I need to zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure. 
But uh, basically on the left you have the YAML content and on the right you have the corresponding um, uh, documentation that is derived from this content. Because I don't know how you are, but I'm not really comfortable reading all this YAML stuff. But here on the right, I can understand what are the methods provided by the server. And for example, I have this uh, method here to get to retrieve all the tasks and I can expand the section. I see, oh, there is no parameter expected and I will get kind of a list of tasks. I have a small example here and so on for the, for the other call. And this is an editor. I did not show that, but uh, of course, if I find my cursor here, I can edit. Let's say I would like to change the um, get all task. Let's change the HTTP method that I want to use. Let's, let's, let's do, for example, option. I have uh, code completion. And now you see the color has changed and the method is no longer the same. I don't think that this makes a lot of sense, but it's only for demonstration purpose. And also you might have already seen that if you type something that is not valid, you get some error marker, you get an error uh, report and a message on the top. You can jump to the problem. And uh, uh, well, I, I would say to, to see directly what is the content of a YAML um, open API file, it's really great to use a tool like this. If you are more into um, desktop tooling, this is an alternative to this online editor. This is um, a plugin for Eclipse IDE. It's based on Xtext. Maybe some of you know the technology. And you get all what you can expect from a decent editor. Like you have the possibility to uh, navigate through the, um, through the specification. You have uh, the possibility to, to jump from a reference to the uh, schema definition, you remember the components section I mentioned earlier. So it's here you can, uh, like you have the outline, also the quick outline where you can also jump to other section. Uh, and uh, the same as with the other editor, if you have a typo, um, you will get some error marker. Also with quick fixes, you have the possibility uh, to add some additional um, operations and so on. So it's kind if you are looking for a decent editor on the desktop, this is really a great solution. Um, yes, so this is the editor and now I switch back. I have shown you the Swagger editor. The URL is editor.swagger.io and this plugin, you can install it from their GitHub uh, repository and they are also present in the Eclipse marketplace so it's really easy to find them. And both projects are open source. And now we switch to the first use case. So because seeing the, the documentation is, is useful but we would like to do more. And uh, you probably know the Postman. It's an electron based um, client to perform some calls. Everybody has seen the Postman? Yes, no, yes. So what you can do here is you have this import feature where you can just import an open API specification. There is one quick limitation at the moment. The, the last version of the specification, the version three, is not supported by the Postman. So you need to have like the definition in the version two format, but it's almost the same. And uh, when you have imported the open API specification, you have here like a collection with all the different call that you can perform. You remember this uh, get all method, I can open it and I can execute it like this. And now I retrieve, I have already a server running and I retrieve the list of tasks that are in this server. And the same goes for, for example, if I want to read a specific um, task, I can call that. Oh, now I get an error because I did not specify this uh, um, path parameter. So let's just copy some valid ID. I can then paste it here to read this and I can send and now I have, um, and now I have, um, I, I have retrieved one item. I can update that 
So um, if I want to change the description, I can select the body and now let's call the update. And here I can provide some uh, JSON body that I want to pro to send to the server. Let's just add like a, an, ex an, an exclamation mark, send it. And now you see the result that's come back from the server. It's, it has updated the record. So it's a really um, simple impl uh, application, but this is for demonstration purpose. It's kind of simple to understand. Um, so this is kind of the, the first um, uh, use case that we are using because we have uh, described all the method that we have um, on our product as an open APS specification. And I can tell you the test team is now using this in order to, to perform some, some tests and in order to, to see if everything is working as expected. Also a nice, nice feature that I will not demonstrate now, but in the Postman you have the possibility to chain several requests. For example, if you want to, to test the create, update, delete flow, you can just bind them and then uh, you will get a small JavaScript runner that can execute the, um, the method in a row and also you can pick some of the um, reply that you get got in order to pass that to the next uh, to the next method. Um, so this is nice in order to test, but maybe we would like to do some server side coding. Um, this you get open you get support for Open API in almost each framework. This is uh, basically impossible nowadays to find. Uh, to, to, do, to, to, to not have a framework that provides somehow with an extension or with a module or whatever some support for open API. I've restricted these slides to some uh, famous Java framework, but uh, if you are more into the Node.js world, you have support there. If you are using PHP, uh, Ruby, Python, all these frameworks often provide some libraries to uh, define some REST uh, endpoints, and they now also come often with kind of a support for the um, creation of the Open API specification. And for this demo that we will use now, uh, I have decided to give the micro profile um, a try because we are at the Eclipse uh, Con, so. Um, uh, you now have this micro profile specification and, and collection of projects like, that comes on top of uh, Java or Jakarta EE now. And uh, there is one project exactly to do that, to come on top of Jack's uh, RS in order, to, in order to provide some API documentation. And this is the demonstration I want to share with you now. Uh, I have decided to use the um, uh, Thorntail implementation of the micro profile specification. I also tried the uh, open liberty. Both projects are open source. One is uh, from JBoss, the other one is from IBM. Both works well. Uh, just a matter of, I don't know, of taste or of, uh, uh, I don't know, of support. You can decide to go for one or the other. They work uh, really similarly. So, um, the, my current JAXRS code looks like this. There is no uh, microprofile support yet. Um, this is really a basic uh, example and probably a real setup will be a little bit more complex, but uh, for demonstration purpose, it's nice to have something small. And the first operation we need to do, of course, is to add the microprofile open API dependency. Uh, the project provides like um, already some support uh, at Maven level, so I just need to add this dependency. The version is managed by some, um, some POM files here, some BOM. So I just need to add that, and then I just can restart my server. Again, I'm not sure if there is another way, but here I just kill my server and rerun it with Maven. And now, if we navigate to like uh, the web page, the, the server is running on port uh, 8080. So if I run on 8080 Open API, Open API here, 
Oh, uh, yes, this is, uh, then I can download the YAML content, but uh, let's switch, maybe I can do the same in Postman so we see the content, it will be much better. So I, here I perform the same rest, uh, the, the same get call and I get the content but not as a file, so it's kind of better to have a look at. So I can here copy it and paste it to the Swagger editor. This is how I started. And already I get some open API support. As you can see, it's not that uh, perfect because I have a bunch of error and if I look at what I got, um, I see the endpoints, but the documentation is somehow missing. This is because uh, at uh, JAX-RS level, uh, this is what you can get, but you do not have all the additional metadata that are also contained in an open API specification. So what we will do now is we go back to our code, to the endpoint, and we can start to add like the additional metadata. There are several ways to do this, and one of them is using um, annotations that comes right next to the JAX RS existing annotation. So for example, if I want to describe this operation, I have like an operation um, annotation where I can say summary is like uh, get all the tasks or something like that, tasks. I can save and then I can restart my server and I will get the summary at the appropriate place. And because this is, uh, now I also need to document what can be the response, and if I have some parameter, I also need to document them to say what, what are the mandatory values, what uh, I can also provide some examples values. So I already did that, so here, it gets kind of an, uh, of an annotation hell, but it works and pretty well. So now I have augmented my JAX RS annotated project with the microprofile annotations. And if I restart, not sure if this is really the way you should work, but this works like killing and restarting the Maven uh, server, the Maven uh, project in order to start the server. Now if I navigate back to the, um, the postman, I perform the call again and now I get the um, I get the um, open API specification with all the information I, uh, that we were missing before. So let's just to be sure copy that to the Swagger editor again. And now all the errors are gone and uh, I have like the documentation and uh, I have the examples and I have the parameters described and so on. Back to the slides. So what we did, just we just added the microprofile open API uh, project to our dependency list, and we added some annotations next to the JAX-RS ones. And this, what we obtained is somehow the code first approach because based on the running server, we obtained like for free, almost for free, the open API specification, the corresponding open API um, um, corresponding to the current server. And then I can, for example, use that in a Postman as I've shown before. And then I can perform some calls from the client to the server. But of course, it could be any kinds of client. So this is one way to use this uh, open API approach. There is another one because maybe we would like to start with the specification. Let's imagine that two teams are discussing the information they need to exchange. So they start with uh, maybe a first draft of uh, the specification they want to have. And then one team will implement the client, another team will implement the server, and um, then both, um, server, both ends can communicate together. But uh, like writing the server and the client implementation manually, it's kind of boring if you have already like the well-formatted uh, open API specification, why not use a code generator to do that? And this is one project I can uh, describe. You have several generators available. 
but um, this is the one I'm working on um, actively. Um, what you can get is uh, based on what one open API specification, you get some HTML documentation or the client code or some server steps that you can then um, start with in order to uh, have a quick start and maybe then implement the, the endpoints that, that, that are requested. So Open API uh, Generator project is uh, open source, hosted on GitHub. It is uh, written in Java, and uh, you have some mustache uh, templates that you that, that that you can use. It is a fork of the Swagger Cogent project. Maybe you have heard of this one before, but uh, with uh, a team of uh, committer, we decided to fork the project in order to be able to of a faster release and to support the Open API version 3 uh, format. And I, as you can see, there is a lot of uh, languages or framework available for each generator. There is a bunch of options. So um, I guess uh, whatever technology you want to use, you might find the appropriate generator for that. Maybe you will not use that um, on production, but it gives you like a, a start um, that, that can be useful. Or you can also decide to generate again and again. So you generate, then the specification evolves because some, some, um, because some, some new methods are, are um, requested, and then you let the generator run again. Uh, both approaches are, are, are possible. It depends a little bit on the setup that you want to have. So let's uh, let's switch to a demo. Um, somewhere I have the terminal where I can run the command to start the Open API generator. I have decided to use the command line based um, approach, but there is also a Maven plugin, a Gradle plugin, so you can integrate that in your build system really easily. And uh, um, I just, um, I have the command line here on a slide, maybe you can see that better. Uh, I, I took the minimal uh, parameter that I requested, like I'm telling here is my open API specification. I want some Java client, and I want to put that in this uh, uh, output folder. But of course, if you have a look at the documentation, you can specify a lot of stuff. For example, which library do you want to use is it, uh, uh, we, we have kind of a lot of um, uh, HTTP client libraries that are available. So uh, you can just give another flag to, to specify that. So now I just need to import this project. So let's do it like this. I copy the path and I switch back to my Eclipse. I select import project an ex existing Maven project, I put the path, I, I import that, and what I get is uh, an open API Java client with here um, all the requested uh, classes to perform the call and to all the model classes that, that will be ex exchanges, exchanged on the, on the server uh, to perform the mm -hmm. server call, and the the generator also provide here like a, a sample JUnit class. It doesn't mean that you need to use the client in a JUnit test case because of course you can, you might have another use case, but this is really convenient now for demonstration purpose because I just need to remove this ignore annotation. And here, if I want to create a task, they have prepared a method for me. so. Now I will just need to implement that. So let's create a task. So task, I can set the description. Description is uh, publish the slides. And uh, the, it's not completed yet. Set task. Uh, uh, set completed, it's false now. And now this will perform the, um, the call and I get a response. Um, the task class it is a simple bin. 
with the correct uh, JSON annotation in order to be able to perform the Java um, to JSON serialization and deserialization. And there is also a toString method that is generated. So if I just want to print out the result, I just can do like a sysout for this for demonstration purpose. Or I could also now, if we are in the JUnit uh, world, we could also like do an assert uh, equals expected uh, get description and uh, response description should be the same. I don't know, it, this doesn't really make a lot of uh, sense, but yes, I don't know, yes. Let's ignore that. Now I can just run the test. Yes. It's green, here I have the sysout. I see that I have uh, created this object. Uh, let's switch to Postman and let's see if it was uh, created. Let's do like the call and you see now I have three tasks and the last one is, is the one I just created. So the, as a conclusion maybe, uh, what we have really appreciated when we have started to use Open API is all the value that you get from the ecosystem because um, this is now a standard and you have a lot of tools that you can use and reuse uh, for your purpose. For example, I have shown the editors, uh, you have tools to generate documentation. This is kind of the next step uh, on my to-do list at Unblue that I will use one of these tools to generate some HTML pages based on the Open API specification. We are also using uh, tools that do some diffs between two open API specification and that can tell me, okay, you have introduced a breaking change or not. And this is really important because for an old version of our specification, we want to keep a backward compatibility and we are uh, checking that with this tool in our Jenkins. Um, you have a lot of integration possible with existing tools. I have shown the Postman because this is what our QA team has started to use. We are gener generating code, for example, this unit test stuff. We are now using that to generate tests. We have integration tests also running on Jenkins. And I just demonstrated Open API Generator because I know this uh, tool really, really well, but uh, you have the Autorest project from Microsoft for the C Sharp world. Of course, also the Swagger Cogen and probably a lot of other tools that I do not know, but this is really great with Open API. It's a, that you always find some tools that you can start to use. That's it for me. Uh, I have time to take some questions. If you have some, uh, you can again follow me on Twitter and I will post the link to this presentation. I have also started a small uh, GitHub project where I have pushed some uh, information, the example I have demonstrated, I will add the slides there, so you have kind of, uh, you have kind of everything you need, it's like here, so this is, this is on GitHub already. So you have kind of all the material I have uh, demonstrated is available, like the example specification here, and so on. Uh, this is in Swagger, but you have here it on GitHub. So here, basically I've, all of what I've shown is available. And now I have time for questions. Yes. So the question is if, if uh, the open API is only for REST. I'm not sure what you have in mind, but uh, yes, it is for REST call, not pure REST, because if you have like, like HTTP request, you can document them. And some people are telling this is not real, real REST, but uh, this is like for, yes, for, for calls. Uh, but what, what are you thinking about? Where yeah, no, for remote protocol, uh, this is not really suitable. 
uh, the only thing that you can do with an open API specification is callbacks description. So this is kind of a uh, direction into kind of protocol, but this is limited to like, I'm performing a call, this register a callback, and then those are the callbacks that I can expect from the server that will call me back at some points. So this is a feature that is interesting, but uh, this is kind of, I'm not aware of additional protocol that you can describe with open API. Other question? Yes, but uh, if you do not have any question, I think it will be time to drink a beer together. So thank you for your attention.